Spoiler alert, if you haven't played the Panacone Trailblaze quest, please come back after you've played it. Panacone, the planet of festivities and the next stop on the Trailblazer's journey. But as you all know, Hongai stories are positive and wholesome and do not kill off any of their characters whatsoever. <laughs> but boy, when they said Hongai Star Rail achieved in one year what Genshin couldn't in three, this was not what I was expecting. Anyways, down to business, shall we? Paracone is located in Asdenau, which is a star system filled with memoria from the memory zone. Paracone is also a colony belonging to the Harmony family, and the Express has been invited to visit. However, Paracone is also a place where some of the nameless had previously alighted and made their homes. As we prepare for the jump, we suddenly have a deja vu of things to come, and we enter what is known as the dreamscape, which is the border between reality and the memory zone. Now within the dreamscape, we meet up with Raiden Shogun. Raiden Shogun is now a galaxy ranger named Akron. Now after walking on wards like Spider-Man and cracking what is an adaptive Oppenheimer joke, Akron asks us, have you met somewhere before? Yes, in two other games. Bruh. So anyway, she kills us and we wake up back in the real world. Typical Raiden Shogun move. After coming across baby Dottore, who is a bellboy named Misha, we run into another character, Aventurin, an elite member of the IPC and one of the 10 stone hearts of which Topaz belongs to. We also meet Mr. Sunday, one of the local leaders of Panacone and his sister Robin, who is apparently a very famous singer. Now while Himiko and Welt discuss that there is something weird about the family's invite to Panacone, we run into Aventurin in our room. Now Aventurin, who finds out about the Stellaron within us, tries something sneaky but is interrupted by Raiden Shogun, who asks us the same question again. Have you met somewhere before? After this exchange, Trailblazer enters the dream pool which helps us to get into the dreamscape. From here we go to enter Golden Hour, which is one of the 12 dreamscapes in Panacone, where time is always 11.59 and tomorrow never comes. After doing a Yamcha style landing in Golden Hour, we run into the most important character, Firefly, who is being suspected of having illegally entered Panacone, but then gets saved by Gallagher, a member of the Bloodhound family. Firefly introduces herself to us as a member of the Iris family and that she's not a stowaway. After showing us around Golden Hour, Firefly tells us about the Watchmaker, the father of Panacone, and that the Watchmaker may have been a nameless just like us. After even more sightseeing, Firefly suddenly warns us that we are being followed and it is by none other than Sampo Koski who for some reason invites us for an R-rated tour of Panacone. Adult entertainment? Following this comes a funny dream segment where we fight for garbage cans to overthrow the garbage king who is apparently again Sampo Koski. Not gonna lie but this cutscene is really really good. Now Sambo tells us that this dream segment is similar to the current Panacone situation and warns us about Firefly. And just as Sambo suspected, Firefly wasn't who we thought she was. While Firefly takes us to a secret base, to reveal the truth, we meet Clocky, Panacone's celebrity who can only be seen by those with a childlike innocence. Under Clocky's guidance and power, we save Misha and Akron, who are being surrounded by members of some unknown gang. Akron then tells us that she was invited to dance in a ball by a mysterious lady in a black veil. Though she doesn't remember the name, the lady was a member of the Garden of Recollection, a group that serves the Aeon of Remembrance. Akron then thanks us again and apologizes for interrupting our date. <clears throat> After reaching Firefly's secret base, she reveals us to us that she was indeed a stowaway. Firefly's hometown was destroyed by either the Legion or the Swarm and that she had to run away to Panacone in search of refuge. She also tells us that she is suffering from a particular syndrome called Entropy Loss Syndrome. After hearing a sad plight, we take a very heartwarming selfie. Now, after returning to Golden Hour, we notice that the place is empty except for Sampo, who then reveals himself to be Hu Tao, I mean Sparkle, who is apparently another masked fool who puts us into the real dreamscape. The real dreamscape is a deeper part of the memory zone within which death apparently lingers. And just as we enter this dreamscape, we get ambushed by a creepy monster called the memory zone meme, something unto death. 
But luckily Black Swan appears, defeats the monster and sends us back to reality, the reverie. Now back in reality with our friends, Black Swan reveals that the current Panacone or dreamscape is collapsing or sinking into the memory zone. After entering back into the real dreamscape again, using string code which was sent to us by the hacker, the Stalron Hunter Silverwolf, we journey around with Acheron and Black Swan, who senses that Firefly is being followed and is now in deep trouble. Black Swan, however, also senses the presence of another person deep within the memory zone. Even though we do finally catch up with Firefly, what happens next is truly heartbreaking. After Firefly's death, Black Swan takes us to a place filled with fragments of what Firefly experienced before her death. It has something to do with her discovery on the Watchmaker's legacy and how she was betrayed by her companion, Mecha. Not soon after, we find out that this companion Mecha was none other than the Stellaron Hunter, Sam. Following a brief exchange of words, Sam and Akron, who still hasn't unsheathed her sword, start fighting and meanwhile Black Swan teleports us back, back to Aventurin. Aventurin explains to us that Black Swan actually saved us from Akron and that she is actually an emanator who brings about death and finality. Aventurin reveals us to us that from his research, he found out that Duke Inferno and the Everflame Mansion were also invited to Panacone, but apparently they were not coming anymore. Aventurin also reveals us to us that this was because the Duke was assassinated by the person claiming to be a Galaxy Ranger, aka Acheron. Still shocked from this particular information, we follow Aventurin to yet another room. And within this room, we find yet another shocking reveal that somebody is lying dead in the dream pool, Sunday's sister, Robin. Following a series of back to deaths and shocking reveals, we come to the end of this trailblaze quest where we are shown Mr. Sunday again with his sister Robin, only that this time it is Sparkle disguised as Robin calling Sunday Chicken Wing Boy. Now while this trailblaze quest did end in what seemed to be a huge cliffhanger, we are yet to know more about the Watchmaker and what the Watchmaker's legacy is all about and why they have invited all these factions over for this particular Charmony festival happening in Panacone. The even bigger question would be regarding Robin's and Firefly's death within the dreamscape. Why was Robin even killed, what she has got to do with all of this and who particularly killed Robin is still a big question. Also, when the Trailblazer was killed by Akron in the dreamscape the first time, we splattered into liquid and same goes for Firefly who was killed by the memory zone meme. But in the case of Robin, Robin just went up into these bubble-like thingies. This begs the question that if people die within the dreamscape, do they actually die in reality as well? Or could it be possible that both of these deaths are actually fake or they might be leading to something even more sinister which is yet to be revealed? Anyways, a popular theory or possibility that has been going around is that the Firefly who died is actually the Stellaron Hunter Sam. It could be possible that Sam's mecha suit is something Firefly is wearing just because of her entropy loss syndrome. But to confirm our suspicions, I guess we'll have to wait for version 2.1 for the next Trailblaze quest, which I'm pretty sure is gonna be an absolute banger, just like this one was. Anyways, that's it you guys for the recap. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next theory video. Bye-bye.